Genesis 2 today. We have the seventh day given to us. In Genesis 1, we had days 1, 2, and 3, and then 4, 5, and 6. Had the realms of creation and then the rulers over creation, especially mankind created in the image of God. But then what about the seventh day? On the seventh day, God rests over all of his creation, not because he was tired, but because he is the ruler over all the realms and we are under him as image bearers. And so we're told about this breath of life that we have, that Adam was given the breath, the, the spirit of God is in him. And, and uh, this, is, this is for us. So we're also told that Adam has work to do. There's nothing wrong with work. There's no sin in the world, and yet there's not only rest, but also work. But he needs uh, a help in his work. And will that help be found in all of the animal kingdom? No. The help is, is not there. Not the right one. And it talks about a helper that's fit for him or somehow is uh, comparable to him. And different translators do different things with the word there. It actually says like opposite him or like across from him. That somehow that this help that he needs will be like him, but not exactly like him. Opposite him or across from him, but not entirely opposite or across from him. So we have here a, a counterpart that's, that somehow the two together will be mankind. And then we have Adam brought to a deep sleep and and the Lord takes from, from Adam the rib and fashions and forms the woman. And Adam is woken up and he says, wow, now, yes, this is the one. She is clearly my counterpart. She is like opposite me. And we're told that this creation of of the woman and therefore having male and female in mankind, we're told that this is something not just for Adam and his wife, but it's for all of society. A man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall be one flesh. And so as future generations are to move forward in the plan of God, this will be done through the gift of male and female, but you'll have the, these helpmates in marriage. Now, I want to just apply this a little bit because the concepts of rest and of marriage are used in the New Testament in really beautiful ways. I don't want you to miss that. So first of all, in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, we see that this idea of the seventh day is mentioned, this original seventh day of rest and the readers of Hebrews are encouraged to enter into that rest of God, that God is in the seventh day, and in a sense, God is the seventh day. But the author says this, that it is through faith in Jesus Christ that we enter into that rest, that our souls were in such need of rest, especially... We'll see tomorrow at Genesis 3, sin entering into the world. We need rest for our souls. And the only way to have a satisfying rest and peace with God is through Jesus. So he's our, our Sabbath. So enter into that rest today and put your trust in Jesus. But then also with marriage, what we have is God's connection with his people. And especially the New Testament says, see Ephesians 5, that it's Christ who is the husband and his church is his bride, his wife. So we are the bride of Christ, male and female. We have entered into the rest of God and we found wonderful love and we have 
No need for guilt or shame anymore. This is the plan of God for us. Oh, Father in heaven, thank you for the rest that you've provided for our souls and for the intimacy of your love for your people. Father, to think that we are loved by you. How beautiful this is. And we're grateful, Lord, for all that you have done for us. Lord, this is our life. This is secure peace and love through Jesus. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed.